this is what the part off looks like. I'm good and flat. I know I've got enough meat and potatoes there. See it? So I'll just knock that little nub off and then I can push against this flat spot with a soft touch when I put them together. Here's the deal. The first cup is turned. Now we have turned the second cup. It's right there. We have to put them together. Now, what I like to do is look for harmonious grain layout. I can't get a grain match, but I'm just looking for something that kind of lets them both run on the same grain. Now this is English basswood, and it's got a really nice line to it. So I put a little reference there. Now to hold them together, I'm using a soft touch on my revolving center. That'll put just about enough pressure to keep them together. I back it off a little bit, get it out the way, and then I apply tight bond too. This is not the place for super glues. This is not the place for exotic glues. This is not the place for polyurethane glues. This is the place for tight bond too. And by the way, it's April 2013. I have tried the new tight bond product and I'm extremely unhappy with it. So with that in mind, I'm going to go back to one I really, really like. And that's what we have on right now. So put this down in place. Bring that grain match back a little bit closer. And then we're going to put the clamp on it a little bit. This gives me the opportunity to do a little bit of alignment. Make sure I'm spinning true. And take a look at it. I'm not absolutely done with the outside shape. I can see that I have some bumps and some bruises to live through, but I do know I'm here. I'm all right. I've got some irregularities, probably on the one I turned a little while ago. But in a little bit, we will true that up. And we'll take those out to where this template goes around nice and comfortably and looks good. And we'll do that after this sets up. Cures. Okay? I, I, I'm going to give it about an hour. And i got to clean up all this mess. So, it's going to be about three days. You know, clean it up the mess. The gluing's been complete for a couple hours now. Got a little sidetrack. <clears throat> I know that the globe on this side, the first one, was much more uniform than the one I turned on the back side because I can see that there's some irregularities. As you can see, look, um, when I go around over here, um, I'm standing proud in a couple of places. So I need to shape this out. And I can see it in just looking at the template over the top of it of where I'm a little bit thick at. So I'm going to begin to shape this up. Get you in another position. Let me show you a little something. When I sharpen my scraper, I need to have a wire up on top. The best way to pull the wire is to push it. It's like pulling a chain or pushing a chain. So I mine it's face down on the table and I go around to put that that wire on there very aggressive now how do I get this table back at the right place every time I want to show you you might have seen this before okay fat finger syndrome how do I set this angle well, to get it the same every time, because I don't like wasting steel if I can cut, cut wood with it. This is a jig I made 
and I'll give you free if you send me an email and ask for the tips. And this is the one I use to put on the wheel to get the memory setting of where the pocket will go. Well, mine's got a second purpose. When it's flat out, put on this table and pushed up against the wheel. I need to stop this from turning for a second. There we are. When it's flat out pushed up against the wheel, this table comes in the right setting by where these two legs touch on that wheel. Mine is special. You can't do this with the template. You adjust it to fit what you want for your flip over on your scraper. This bevel right here should be about 15 degrees. Should be. That's my preference. Yours might be different, but let's go to 15 and try that. This is the ball. You can see the egg part I've got right here. This is that fatness I'm telling you about that's knocking me out. I feel good about this side. I don't feel good at all about this side. Let's take a look at it. It's running very true. So the glue up worked. I'm reasonable. Now, how I would get this is to turn my scraper up on edge and ease this away. Can't take a lot off this, otherwise I'll be looking at the inside. It's not the goal for right now. I have it rotting on this softened shoulder. I'll remove a little, check a little. I can see I'm a little bit better. And looking at it around, I know where I'm, I'm, I got a high spot. It's still right back in here. So we keep working on that till we get it down. Got it? It's nothing quick now because I want to be thin.
sharpened up my parting tool and I'm going to easily slip it right down into here. Now, if it's not cutting smoothly, get it back out and clean it up again. You can see I'm sliding around on an angle. I don't want to muscle it off. So I don't want to break it. This is going to be so great. Uh oh. It's going to go. There. Now you see what I ended up with? I got a little onion top here. When I put it around, and, and well, you're going to see this in a minute. I'm saving this cup. I'm going to show you how. But first, you got to move. Let me show you the intention. This is a piece where I want to go. This is just a glue block, and I've dished it out to where it'll make contact with the ball. But I'm going to leave. I'm going to make such a small contact. I'm going to probably leave a burn mark on it. I don't want that to happen. So I would fine tune it until this closely matched this, the curves. Okay. I have one on here that I'm just going to modify to get it there. I'm going to modify it using a curve scraper because it's the quickest way to get a curved surface. And I don't need it making contact in the center. It's amazing what you can get done with a scraper if it's really sharp. Just like that. Get the Oh, I tell you what. Have I told you lately I'm so good it's scary? That's almost a perfect match. You can't see it, but you really do have to trust me. It's a killer. In order to use this effectively, I can't use it like this. I know this is good. What I'm going to do now is fix the top a little bit flip it around and put threads in it. Straighten up the tendon real quickly. Just flip it 180. Just like that. No tendon, it won't be in there very long. Shoulders out. It should run very true. Let's see what happens. Very true. See that? That's what I'm looking for. Very true. I'm going to drill a 5 8 inch hole and then tap it with a 3 quarter 10 tap. Now you know where it's going? Sure you do. Give you an idea where I'm going with this. That's the hole I just drilled with a Forstner. Pardon me, a Forstner bit. This is my one-way revolving center. This is my three-quarter ten tap. This is made by, I believe, Hanson Tap Company, and I, I bought it at the Ace Hardware Store down on a corner. Now, yeah, it's convenient. I do have the Ace in the neighborhood, like my neighbor, my buddy Mark. That'd give me a discount. All right, now. I'm on the back end over here. You can't see my right hand. You have no idea what it's doing, do you? All right, I'm going to feed. I just locked the headstocks. Locked. I'm going to feed the tap in, keep it lined up with the revolving center as I go into this piece of wood. The revolving center keeps it from wobbling 
getting out of line and not making the, 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 the threaded hole true to the line of the, of the lathe. You don't need, you're not forcing it with the tailstock. You're just guiding it. Got it? Got it. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Let me answer your question before you ask it. It may be Hanson and it may be another manufacturer for the tap. But they are available at Ace Hardware Store and if they're not on a rack, tell your friendly Ace Hardware guy that you want him to order you one. They are far cheaper than doing a catalog service and it keeps the money in your neighborhood including the sales tax dollars which helps. Now this is what I created. This is my one-way revolving center and I'm going to thread that piece on there and what I end up with this is a voila moment I end up with something that will hold that ball and spin and keep it from getting away from me. Got it? That was a voila moment. Now, that's one of them. I have to hold it over here, and I sure don't want those teeth up against it. So over here, I have another glue block piece. Remember, when I do glue blocks, I'm doofus. I do have 30 of them down there, maybe 40 of them. I find a piece of 2 by stock, and I will turn glue blocks until I'm batty, because I need them. Now, I do know when I did this a few minutes ago, I needed to make the inside a little bit deeper. That's what I'll do here. Then we bring the sphere back and check it, and that's much better. And here, now you, you pretty much know where I'm going, right? This is what? we will end up with. I'm going to be a little bit out because I need some adjustment room here. Alright. I'm going to put this sphere between these two centers. That's how I'm going to fix and get rid of this. Got it? I think you do. At this point, you need to ask yourself why is the camera not directly behind it? And why is a cap went ahead and put on his catcher mask and his bulletproof vest? Because this is where I'm going to blow this thing up. If I have it wrong and I cut through this side or that side, we're out of here. It's going to blow up. So we really do shield up now. Make sure that we're protected. I like the Uvex Bonix face shield with the hard polychromic shield. All right, now you know. I'm shielded up and I'm ready. Got a little pressure on it. Can't have much pressure. I'll blow it up. You can see the shadow of the, 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 the goat. You see? I just moved it. It wasn't tight enough in the right spots.
As I'm turning it, I can't show it to you because I don't think you'll see. Yeah, you see it. You see the ghost over here? You see less over here, more over here. That's where I fixed it at somewhat, and I haven't fixed it over here. See the difference? We stop, we take a look. And you can see that it, the piece is spinning a little bit because I wasn't cutting on an angle, but it is all out, it is revolving some. So I'm going to move it a little bit, go back in, snug it back up, and make a few more passes. You got it? This is slowing and eating an elephant. Now, after going round for round with that scraper for about 15 minutes. I've got all the high points knocked off and using the jig between the centers I'm going to go ahead and sand. And I'm starting with 180 or I started with 180. I've now changed to 220. And I sand a little bit, loosen up the tailstock, rotate it and start again. Now, don't hold the piece to stop it when you got it loose because you'll put a burn mark on it. Then you have to sand out the burn marks. Now if we'd use the ball jig, turn this with a ball jig and trude it again with a ball jig, and there's a dozen of them on the internet for you to make, we wouldn't have any wobble at all. Or would have very light wobble. Now, see, just put it up and Bring the power back to it again. If you sand it too hard and stop it, it'll burn it. But you sand for a moment or so and then you rotate. That would be a burn mark. We'll take it all the way to 400 like this which is plenty enough for what we plan on doing in phase two. Coming up at the end of my 400 run now, I've made sure that when I've turned it on this run, that I turned it 90 degrees each time, so I covered all the, the the orbs and pieces and then leave anything behind. A minute or so I had to stop and wet a spot because I could see where uh, I had a couple little grain poles. You didn't see it when I was scraping I had a couple of light catches. What I end up with is a relatively smooth and fairly uniform orb or ball. Now, I'm going to wet this in a little bit, just a little bit in a couple of spots, because I still see some grain tears. And then I'm going to sand them to, to eliminate those grain tears. What's going to happen when I wet it, I'm going to ri make them rise a little. Now if I make it too wet, I'm going to separate the ball and make it move too much. So I'm just not going to squirt it down. I'll take a little paper towel and just dab a couple of spots. Some won't, won't bother me. Now, this is phase one of about a three phase project for us. We did some glue blocks, we did some holding, we did some hollowing, we did some thin forms, we did some offsets, used a couple of templates. Put it between finish, finished. Uh, put it between centers. Did some scraping. We've used about eight or nine tools, and we've created something. Now the techniques will probably help you with a half a dozen other projects. Projects because I don't see a whole lot of you guys going out making a ball and then drilling holes in it. 
But our next project is going to be to lay out the spheres. I'm sorry, lay out the ball and decide what will pierce where. And I have an idea what I want to do. I just have no idea how to get there. I mean, how do I get a swirl from here to there and still have some ball left? Well, all I can tell you is I got a really nice glue joint out of it. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and you've joined me in my shop as we've been making shavings. If you need me, get a hold of me. And oh, by the way, there's a brand new phone number coming up. So if you used to call me on the old number, toss it. Big Eye Productions went big time with a whole new phone and everything. Yeah, I know it's not a big deal, but hey, it's the only thing we got going this week. You take care. I'll see you soon. And don't forget, the best prices and carbide cutters on this planet, just this one, not that one. This planet, Big Eye Productions. www eddiecastlin.com You take care and I'll see you soon. I do like this. It's got an egg shape in one spot, like I do. Okay, I got an egg shape in a couple of spots, but leave that alone. See you soon.